Hello everyone, I'm Steph Grasso, I'm a registered dietitian, and welcome to Sliding Into a Dietitian's DMs. This is a series where I'm going to check my DMs, whether it's TikTok or Instagram, and answer your nutrition questions. But first, let's check out to see if I got any good ones, or bad ones, or weird ones. Ah uh, yes, the classic question I get probably 30 times a day. What's your opinion on the keto diet? I'm not gonna answer that right now. <laughs> Some just make me laugh. I hate kale until, well, I met you. Your tip to massage it first was amazing. I now eat kale three to four times a week. Cook with it and also make it as a salad. Delish, thank you. I love that. Yeah, so if you massage your kale for, you know, a couple of minutes, it really breaks down the fiber. It gets rid of that whole bitterness and it just tastes so much better too. Oh, I love messages like these. These are the messages that really motivate me to continue making content for you guys. Your videos have given me so much hope and remind me of why I love the field of dietetics. Currently super burnt out in an outpatient job and feeling very inspired to make a change. Thank you for what you do. When you have 2 million followers, you're bound to have some weird ones. So. Let me see if I got one for you. Oh my gosh, here we go. Hey beautiful, sorry if this offends you. I find you very attractive and I like you to be my sugar baby. Just letting you know my intentions in case you're interested. I will give you weekly allowance and send you gifts. Just basically paying for your time and spoiling you. I hope to get a reply from you. Hmm, what do you guys think? Should I, should I do it? I can use a sugar daddy. Okay, here's a nutrition question that I will answer today. I love your videos and I'm really trying to put something into practice, but I am pre-diabetic and have been told to limit my carbs to 50 a day. Is this recommended? I'm struggling to feel full on that amount. Oh boy, do I have a lot to say. And this question is perfect because I feel like a lot of my followers always ask on my TikTok, which I eat if I have high blood sugar. And you know, I have to make a long video to answer that question and TikTok will not like that. So why not do it right now? Let's get into it. So let's talk pre-diabetes. What is pre-diabetes? When you're diagnosed with pre-diabetes, that means you are at risk for diabetes. Your blood sugar is a little bit too high to be considered normal. However, you don't meet the criteria for diabetes, but you are at risk for insulin resistance. Let's take a step back and go over what insulin does to a healthy individual. After you eat, your body breaks down carbohydrates from food into glucose, which is a fancy name for blood sugar. Once that food gets broken down into glucose, it goes into your bloodstream, making your blood sugar rise. Your pancreas detects when your blood sugar rises. Once it hits a certain threshold, it releases is its army called beta cells. These beta cells release insulin. Insulin helps move glucose into your cells so that it can use it for energy. This is what brings your blood sugar down. The more glucose you have in your bloodstream, the more insulin your pancreas has to release. When someone is becoming insulin resistant, that means that the beta cells from the pancreas have to produce more insulin in order to maintain normal blood sugar levels. Gosh, your body's so cool for doing that. However, as this condition progresses after a long period of time, the pancreas starts to weaken its insulin production and your blood sugar starts to become chronically high. So think of it this way, say that you were told that you need to hold a cup of water. Okay, easy. You can probably go, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes. Now, after an hour, it starts to get a little harder. Your muscles are starting to shake and you know, over the course of a few hours, you really can't hold this cup of water and you need that additional support, maybe like a shelf or another hand holding your arm up. So as time goes on, your arm is going to weaken and eventually just give up. It's the same thing with the pancreas. You know, the more insulin it releases, it's at full power mode, you know, insulin, insulin, insulin. And then as time goes on, it's going to start to weaken and weaken and it just cannot keep up with your blood sugar levels. But guess what? You went to the doctor, you were diagnosed with prediabetes and good news, you're not diagnosed with diabetes. So that means you can prevent it. But how do we prevent it? You know what I'm gonna say, <laughs> lifestyle changes. You know, changes in your nutrition and physical activity. We all know that, but what specifically do you need to change? Let's start with physical activity. It's recommended to get at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity physical activity. One way to do this is to try to fit in 20 to 25 minutes of activity every day. This could include a brisk walk, doing housework, mowing the lawn, dancing, swimming, biking, or just playing sports. But I'm a dietitian, so I wanna get into the nutrition intervention. But I first wanna make a disclaimer. This is general nutrition advice for individuals with pre-diabetes. I cannot recommend specific medical nutrition therapy because every human body is different 
and everybody has a different medical history. This is why it's so important to personally see a registered dietitian who can provide you individual recommendations. And please, please consult your doctor before making any drastic changes. So to answer your question, yes, 50 grams of carbs per day is not a lot. Like it's way too low. In other words, your doctor basically put you on the classic keto diet, which is usually most doctors recommendation or go to when they want somebody to lower their blood sugar, because that's the easiest intervention for them to say, just do keto. However, the American Diabetes Association describes a low carb diet as 150 to 200 grams of carbs for individuals with prediabetes. Yeah, you heard me right. These recommendations are evidence-based recommendations that one, are more realistic, and two, lead to long-term changes to your health. We want a solution that will help us long-term. Yeah, it's great that we were able to lower our blood sugar in a month, but how long can you follow a 50 gram carb diet? I would not last more than a few months. I don't even think I can last a month. It's just not realistic. Remember, our body's preferred source of energy is carbohydrates, so we need to respect its needs. Also, a low-carb diet could raise your cholesterol, cause harm to your kidneys, and most importantly, it excludes so many nutritious foods that can actually help improve your blood sugar, such as whole grains, beans, and fruit. So here are my nutrition recommendations that are supported by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. For women who are trying to lose weight, it's recommended to have about three servings of carbohydrates per meal. For weight maintenance, it's recommended to have about four servings of carbohydrates per meal. And for men who are trying to lose weight, it's recommended to have about four servings of carbs per meal. For weight maintenance, it's recommended to have about five servings per meal. Okay, great. But what is one serving of carbohydrates? One serving of carbohydrates is 15 grams. This is one sentence I really want you to memorize. Out of this whole video, I just want you to remember this. One serving of carbohydrates is equal to 15 grams. So for women trying to lose weight, it's about 45 grams per meal and 150 to 165 grams for the whole day. This includes snacks containing about one to two servings of carbohydrates. For men trying to lose weight, it's about 60 grams of carbs per meal and 195 to 210 grams of carbs for the whole day. Again, this includes the snacks containing one to two servings of carbs. It's very important to space out your carbohydrate intake evenly throughout the day. You do not want to go from having zero carbs all day to 150 carbs at nighttime. This is like a tornado crashing into your pancreas. We do not want to spike our insulin like that. The key is to follow a consistent carb diet. That means having about the same amount of carbohydrates for each meal. So about three to four servings of carbs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and one to two servings of carbs in between meals. This will build trust between you and your pancreas, and it takes a bit of weight off of your pancreas. Three to four servings of carbs per meal, that seems like a lot. Eh, it actually adds up pretty quickly. For an example, one serving size of carbohydrates is equivalent to a slice of bread, a half medium banana, and a half cup of juice. So say for breakfast, you have an avocado toast with a whole banana, a half a cup of juice, and that's it. So your toast, a whole banana, and a half a cup of juice. That is four servings of carbohydrates right there. So can you imagine to sticking to 50 grams of carbs for the whole day? Yeah, no. That's why a consistent carb diet is much more realistic. I'm gonna provide resources for you guys that provides examples of what one serving of carbohydrates looks like. The nutrition label is gonna be your best friend. Say you're just really craving mac and cheese, but you don't know how many servings you can have. So here's what to do. First, check the serving size. Luckily, this box of mac and cheese is considered one serving size. Usually it says half or like one fourth, so I'm pretty happy to see this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna look at the carbohydrates and divide that number by 15. Because remember what I I told you to memorize, one serving of carbohydrates is equal to 15 grams. Okay, so we divide 44 grams by 15 and we get three, roughly. It doesn't have to be exact. So if I eat this whole box of mac and cheese, this is gonna take up three of my serving sizes, which is my limit if I'm trying to lose weight. But say you want apple juice with your mac and cheese. What you can do is eat half the box of mac and cheese so that you have one serving size of carbs left for that meal. So a half cup of apple juice and a half box of this mac and cheese will give you three serving sizes of carbs which is your limit for that meal. And again, you can have snacks containing one or two carbs in between meals. But we don't just wanna eat carbs for a meal, we wanna balance it out with fiber, protein, and or a nutritious fat. 
Why is that? Adding fiber, protein, or nutritious fats will actually slow down the absorption of glucose into your bloodstream, which will prevent that drastic insulin spike. So to answer your question, limiting your carbohydrate intake to 50 grams per day as a pre-diabetic is not recommended, according to this dietitian. I will be checking my DMs every day. If you want to be featured and or get a shout out, just let me know. If you want to catch my eye and make things interesting, send it. But most importantly, if you have a nutrition question, let me answer it for you. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below with your nutrition question, and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me both on TikTok and Instagram. I'll see you next time.